going to talk to you about the moldable inspector. But first, I guess you heard of the GT inspector, so that's the new object inspector for Faro. And the moldable inspector is the model on which the inspector is based. So to begin with, why do we need a new object inspector? Let's look at an example. Yeah. So at a certain point, we were developing a new text editor, and we had this problem to find a conflicting key binding in a text morph, in a morph representing an editor. And yeah, we could, we could get the object, but then we got this inspector. And here we had a state. And the state was very, very useful for looking at how the object is represented. But for our problem, we needed to find the key bindings, the mapping between keys and various actions. And for that, we had to dig, and in the end, this is a very small subset of windows. We ended up with 20 windows or something. Because the key mapping is very nice, the framework, but it completely decouples the more from the key binding. There's like three or four levels of field direction, and then you have to also look at the submorphs, at the owner, and in the class hierarchy. So it's a complete, it's a very difficult task to use an object inspector to find key mappings. And the idea is that different, not, this doesn't happen just for more. There are any other object, and different tasks that we do exercise different aspects of an object. The state is just one that's useful when you want to look at the internal representation. But performing other tasks on objects, on the same objects, has, dif has different needs. They're not, so one view doesn't cover everything. The second, we rarely look at one object. More or less, we explore. We start from one object, then we move to another, then to another, or look for something. It's very rarely that I just need to look at one object and I find everything that I need there. I get it right from the first time. So these are two main problems that if object inspectors don't take into account, they more or less get in more they look, they more get in the way than actually helping us. And object inspectors are quite important tools because they provide access to the object. We have the object there. And because they are very simplistic tools, we open them, we look a little bit and then we leave to other tools. They permanently switch between them. We know we use the object inspector for a very, very, very limited tasks. And we can solve this. We can solve this if we have multiple presentations. So what do I say by this? So multiple interchangeable presentations for each object. <coughs> we have to acknowledge that there are multiple aspects that we need to know about objects. So each object should have multiple presentations. So this is how we solve the key binding. We created a presentation for a morph object that shows its key binding. So this now becomes trivial. We open the morph, we inspect the morph object, and we switch to the morph, the keys presentation, and we get all the key bindings right there in the inspector. We don't have to leave anywhere else to find them. And this was very useful. It solved a lot of problems. But the key bindings is just one aspect. When dealing with morphs, what about with objects, what about the source code? Again, we added a view to have the source code directly in the inspector. And here, self is bound to the object. So you can execute code here and you have the object. You can easily test. You're not in an editor that doesn't know anything about the object. Then when you're dealing with morphs, there is, you always want to know the submorphs. You always want to explore the tree of submorphs to see how it looks like find a certain morph there. You can use the state view, but again, the state view has a lot of overhead. You can expand using the tree, but still you have to do a lot of work. Here you can get just one view that shows you the submorph. That's the tree of submorphs. <coughs> and last but not least, you could see a visual representation of the morph directly within the inspector. So for the morph, we actually have six different presentations, each useful in a certain context. So instead of always using one, the state, to reason about the morph, you can use a custom one depending on what you need at that moment. And second, moldable navigation. So we need a workflow in which multiple levels of connecting objects can be seen together. So we, stop, we need to stop focusing on one object at a time. We need to have somehow to navigate more clearly. So what do I mean by this? Here we were before. So the first thing that we do is somehow automatically arrange these objects. So as you inspect, we automatically arrange the objects from left to right, so you start 
with this, and then you always have to put it to the right. So you always put the next object to the right. So you always know that you start it from the left and you move to the right. But here, I have a lot of windows. I just want one window. So we put this, yes, so we put, did I speak? No, so we put this into one window. So now every time you open, you select an object. Here it goes to the right, to the right, to the right. So this preserves the workflow, and it always allows you to know how you got from one point to the other. That's one. And second, given that real stream state is expensive, and we don't always want to see everything, we have a way of controlling the visible objects. So if you look here, you can see that it's one, two, they're all my objects, but now I can look just two of them. Now I have a video just to show you more or less better the idea. So now I can scroll, so I have all my section there, all the objects, but I'm looking just at the fixed number of them. Then I can move the mouse and get an overview. If I click it to navigate, so again I can control the number of visible objects if I want to look at one, two, or more. So this is a different way to navigate between objects. The technology that we need to explore and we need to also look at multiple objects, not always at one. And we need this automatically. We need to move windows around all the time to arrange. Because then we lose a lot of time and effort and it's a big overhead in doing that. So this is what the moldable inspector offers. So it provides moldable presentations and moldable navigation. navigation. And the GT Inspector implements this idea, and it also makes it very easy and cheap to create new types of presentations. So it's not tight lines. It's very few lines of code to add a new presentation for an object. And this opens a wide range of possibilities. Now we can use the inspector for a very wide range of use cases. Now I'm going to show you a few examples. So I said about key bindings. So now we have here a morph object and the morph object has a presentation to show the key bindings. And now if I select a key binding, again, I get to the right the key binding object, and in that object I have a presentation that shows me the source code and highlights the source code that's executed when that key mapping is triggered. So now all of a sudden I can easily browse the key mappings and then see what code gets executed. So this was very, very, very useful for us when we were building a new text editor. But Morphs is one example. We can move to compile methods. That's a different example. So here I have a compile method. And one thing that I am doing a lot of times is crossing SD. So now I have in the compile method a presentation that shows me the SD of an object. But I can do more. If I select an SD node, I get to the right the SD object that is in that node. And I have here a view that shows the source code of the method and highlights the code corresponding to that AST node. So I can all of a sudden browse the AST nodes and see how they map the source code. And this was again useful when building some debugging tools. We did some verifications and we always needed to know how was the source code, how was the AST mapping back to the source code. Otherwise, it's quite difficult to do this. You can, but it takes a lot of time and it introduces a lot of overhead. One more example. So what happens to files? So more or less, if you inspect a file object, all you get is the, the state presentation, all you get is the path, more or less. But what about the content of a, file, of a folder object, of a file object? So now here I've opened the, I have an object that represents a directory. So in this object, I can simply have a view that shows me the content, right there in the inspector. I can see the list of files or folder contained within a folder object. So now I can select it, and then I will get the right that folder. I selected here a folder, so I get a folder. And again, I can see its content. And now I can go and I can explore. I can select, for example, here I selected flower.png. So now here, again to the right, I got a present. I got the inspector on a file reference object pointing to a PNG file. So I can have on it a presentation that shows me the content of that file as a picture all of a sudden. So now here I have another file, it's called script.sd. If I select that one, 
contains Smalltalk script. A Smalltalk script. So I can have a presentation that simply shows me the Smalltalk script with syntax highlighting. Again, a different presentation depending on the type of that file. So I no longer have to look at it all the time using the text editor that has no syntax highlighting. So here I can actually edit this or execute it to continue the navigation. So in a nutshell, the multiple inspector enables task-specific workflows directly within the inspector. So again, this enables us to spend more time in the inspector where the objects actually are. Instead of having inspectors that are simple tool that always force us to go outside of the inspector, we bring those tools directly within the inspector. So the objects are everything happens in the inspector. So it's much easier to read them or to even to code when you have the objects instead of permanently switching to code editors. And the mode the implementation of the Moodle Inspector, the GT Inspector is available in Moose, so it's installed by default, it's a new default inspector, so if you download Moose, you will get to experience this. And also, if you want more information, gt.moosetechnology.org. We have a very nice trailer that you can watch. And there you can see how to download it in your own image if you want. And you can also learn more about other tools that are developed based on the same idea. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Any question? Yes? I'm waiting for some support for scripting for inspectors in uh, the multiple inspector. Scripting you want some. So basically I open up my object. Mm -hmm. My object doesn't have any particular new inspectors. And I want some domain specific uh, inspector that I care about. So how can I script it directly? And yeah, you basically can. try to script it and see it. Any question? But actually you can do that. You know, you can, if you open an inspector on an object, you can switch to the code view. And right there you can create a new presentation. It has Glamour, it's a very scripting like language. Save and you get it in the inspector. So you can edit the inspector live from within the inspector. And we have like 100 and something different extensions for a lot of different objects. Yeah. And on average, each one is like six, seven lines of code, so the effort is not that much. That's good. Yeah. And, and most of them are developed precisely in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah because okay. uh, basically each problem has its own domain and you want to. Yeah. So at the moment, the, the inspector is very, very versatile. You can do very cool things. But um, I noticed that the, so the, the like the list of files, for instance, that we get, that's a bit static. So, for instance, it's not easy to add new information about, let's say, a certain file type, like I don't know, add a color or, you know what I mean? So is, do you have any plans in that direction to make that more, in, in the same sense, more versatile, more scriptable? Maybe I'm not really following. Okay. So, for example, uh, suppose you have a folder and you have files in there and now you want to, for some reason, you want to add uh, the information whether or not this is committed in Git. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that should be quite easily. You just have to extend the presentation. Yeah, but the present what he's saying is that the presentation of folder mm -hmm. with the files already exists and you would like to extend that presentation. Yeah, that's again possible. Yeah, so, it, um, so like in my case, I. What I had to do was I had to um, change the method yes. that defined the presentation for the items tab. Right. Exactly. Okay. So now I got it. So for now we have to go and change the method that creates the presentation in order to modify that presentation. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely a direction to go where you should be able to edit somehow visually the presentation. Perhaps I want to add a new column. You click on the new column and then the code gets updated. Right now we don't have that. It's just one way from the code to the inspector. I have another thing regarding this problem. For example, I'm interested in CVS and you're interested in G. Mm -hmm. And it's stupid to have all the information there. Is there any support for like plugging in some plug or turning on and off some plugins or something like this? Because if you, even for objects, you know, somebody is interested in this kind of visualization, somebody else for another task. Right now you show all the tabs. Yes, the same for the yeah, files. That's coming next. The next is coming, what they're working now is adding context to the inspector. Context? So there's cool. a notion of context. <laughs> yes. You'll be able to, so if you say I'm working in the Git context, then you'll see only presentations relevant for Git in the inspector. If 
or in a CFD context, or that will filter more or less the presentations that are shown automatically. We also do, do that somehow we filter, so if you inspect certain objects, then you only show certain presentations next. So we try to filter based on the session, but we also try to have an explicit context, and we're adding it now, that will only show certain types of presentations depending on what you are doing. And it might be good to have like a stupid context that the user just chooses what he wants? Yeah, definitely. But it will, yeah, it would be very simple mm -hmm. to refine and choose, but it also be more like a because automatic is good, but sometimes yeah, but the whole Last question. No. Oh, thank you.